In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the BMW N54 wastegate bushings. I've had some people have some problems installing these, so I'm going to show you how they mess those up, that up and how to do it correctly. Before I do the install, I'm going to show you the difference in the old kit versus the new kit. This is the older version. This is 0.8 millimeter or 0.8 inches from end to end where the bushing rides. The new kit is 0.9 millimeter. The bushing's also longer. The difference is that this area is machined down farther and then the bushing is longer. The purpose of that is to give more surface area so that the wastegate arms will last longer than the original. These are also stainless steel just like the factory parts. Also welded up this the spacer and the area where the flap connects on the new models so that these will not have any problems separating. I'll go ahead and show you how to install the bushing so you don't mess this up. I will post the link in the description box of the new kit where you can purchase that. If you don't see it there, because I'm not going to list it within the next 12 hours, if you don't see it there, you can always email us at turbolabamerica at gmail.com. Here you can see the difference in the measurement between the two bushings. The new one is on the bottom and the old version is on the top. Comparison of the old flap with the new bushing. And the new bushing with the new flap. Or we could also do the old bushing with the new flap so you can see how much it sticks out. How much more surface area we have with the new bushing. The best thing to do if you're trying to put this bushing into the housing is you want to use a press. Some of my customers says use a hammer and it's not worked out that way. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do and I wouldn't recommend doing this any other way than what I show you in this video if you want to do this correctly. If you use a hammer you're going to end up denting the whole outside of this and sometimes the flap will start to lock up because you smushed it in compressing the tolerances. Another thing that can happen is if you're using a hammer or not pressing it in straight is you can bend and warp this bushing so that you ruin the tolerances and the flap will no longer spin like it's supposed to. So watch carefully as I install this so you'll do this correctly. The first thing you want to do is to get the housing as flat as you can here so you're going to try and level it out by putting spacers under the housing accordingly see this area needs a little bit of a spacer here otherwise it will tilt down like that it's a good idea to take a dremel tool and just make sure there's no deburrs inside of this part of the housing so that you won't have any resistance of the bushing going down in here Usually I drill out this pin. One of my employees did not do that, but sometimes you could still get the bushing out without removing that pin. But I'm gonna make sure whenever you do this that you either drill that out, or if you don't drill it out, you can also push the original pin back in to go to lock in the bushing. The key to getting this in correctly straight so that you don't bend the bushing is you want to first start to press it down by hand and I usually go for the corners so you will do it in back corner front corner left corner right corner the purpose of that is so you align the bushing into the housing otherwise if you don't do that and you have any type of resistance then the bushing is going to bend and it's going to cause you problems the way that I tell whether or not this is in there straight or not is I operate the jack by hand. If you're having so much resistance that you can't operate it by hand and need to have a lever, then it's binding up here and you need to hit on or you need to shift the part onto one of the corners to realign the bushing because it's not going in there straight. So I pressed it down a little bit. You see it's not really in there straight. So we're going to shift the housing to the left to compress on this side to make sure that we compensate for it being too far in on this side. 
which will prevent the bushing from getting bent in the installation. I simply shifted it over. Now I need to shift it to the back corner over here. Now we're going to go to this side. Now we need to go to the front corner. Now we're going to go to the back corner again. Now it's going in straight. Notice how it's not making any squeaking noises. If it's making any squeaking noises, you're bending the bushing. This is what happens if you don't follow the instructions that I showed you in the video. This bushing is bent at the bottom. You can see where it got pinched. I'll show you what it looks like when you try to put this on. It gets stuck at the bottom. This is what it should look like. It should go on perfectly fine. Here's our housing that we did the install on. You always want to go back and check it. We're just going to check the flap, spin it around, make sure there's no problems with it. Now I'll go ahead and weld this up and show you what it looks like. Make sure you mark this before you remove the flap so that you put it back in the original position. The rear housing is a lot easier than the front one because you have a lot better points that you can hold the housing on or hold the housing flat on the press. The other one, this is a custom fixture that we have made. So this lays down and this area is cut out so that the back, this area of the housing can sit down and the, this piece of wood contacts here and here but misses this area so that it doesn't have any problems with tilt when you go to press it down. Here's the finished result of welling on the flaps.